Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over how to use a webhook or an API. If you are a salesperson or you're on a RevOps team or something like that, using webhooks and APIs feels like a cheat code for uh, sales automation and things like that, because you don't have to rely on the integrations that the tool gives you. And so the first thing we're going to cover is what is the difference? Well, I guess what is a webhook and an API, right? And so one, I'm not technical, so if anybody has a problem with this, I, great, I, I would agree with them. Uh, I am very much a salesperson first, um, but the a webhook and an API is essentially the way that you can get softwares to talk with another, one another. They can send information, they can kick off workflows, they can do a lot of things, but this is how two softwares communicate together. And so when you're using an API, you can think of it as... Uh, you know, when you get, you know, a new email address and you want to send that email address to your sales like engagement platform, you could use an API to automatically add it straight in. And so uh, if you have data and you want to, you know, in this moment, add all of that data in, you can do that. Uh, I compare it a lot to uh, if you're, you know, at your house and you're you know, waiting for mail or you're, you're sending mail, really it's your sending mail. Um, you can just, same thing with opening it, like using an API is just opening up a door. You open the door, you put the mail in the mailbox, you sent it there, you in control, were in control of the timeline and everything that happened there. Uh, a webhook is different though. Take the same uh, mail example. If you were waiting for a package to come, you're not opening the door every five minutes to check if the package is there. You're waiting for the Amazon delivery person to ring your doorbell, and then you go down and you open up the door. So in one situation, you're opening up the door and you're you know, checking things, and that's what an API would do if you're constantly checking or you're sending things or you're opening up the door to send the mail. And then a webhook is somebody coming in and ringing your doorbell and saying, hey, we've got something for you here. So APIs is kind of like sending stuff out and then webhooks is when things come in uh, and they come in instantaneously. And so in this video, we're gonna go over a lot of the examples of how to do this. We're gonna start though with a webhook. So I have this form builder over here where uh, we have these webhooks set up. Uh, well, we're going to go over how to set up a webhook. And so you can go to integrations and then you see webhooks right here. And so in the webhook, we're just going to click connect and then we need an endpoint URL. Hmm. Where do we get the endpoint URL? Well, the endpoint URL comes from uh, the tool that you want to send the data to. And so if I come into clay, this is clay.com and I set up a webhook source, I can click on the webhook. Whoops. And then see how we have this link right here? This is where we would be sending, oh, whoops. This is where we would be sending the data to. So if we hit connect, great. So now it's connected. And now I'm gonna fill this out and I'm gonna say Eric Nozlowski. And then immediately we're gonna hit submit and the data is gonna be sent to the webhook. Now we can delete this and we can do another one. Make.com is another place that you could send webhooks. It's the same exact process as uh, as Clay. You would just open it up. We're going to click webhooks. Well, actually, I don't want a, uh, a mail hook. I want a webhook. And then we're just going to click add. IP restrictions, we don't need anything like that. We're just going to hit save. And now we have this link right here. So then we're going to grab this link. And then we're going to put it in here. We're going to hit connect. And then I'm going to put this one in again, and I'm just going to hit Eric Noah Slowski, uh, clay.run, hit submit. Great. And then it's filled out. And then see how it's doing. It's looking for stuff right now. So if we were to hit run this module only, whoops, we're going to hit OK. Run this module only, and maybe we need to send some data right now. Whoops. Send that data again. Now we've sent this data and now we have this form response and we can see the fields and we have the value here and we have the value here, same way that we have the values over here. And so essentially that's setting up a webhook. Super, super easy. Usually, not usually, the tool you're sending the data to has the webhook URL. You send it to that endpoint, you're good to go. 
Now we're going to have APIs. And so I find APIs to be more difficult to use uh, because there's variations oftentimes in the tool. And so what I mean by that is, is everyone has different API documentation. And so a webhook, you could just wire up and you're just good to go. Everyone has different API documentation. So you have to watch out for different things. Um, so first we're going to go over the tagmas API. And so what I love about the tagmas API as a non-technical person, I don't know what all of this is. What I love is he's got this query parameter thing where I can create the uh, search that I'm going to do. And then after I create the search that I'm going to do, he changes the endpoint over here. So if I were to delete Eric and I were to delete Noah Slavsky, see how his endpoint changes, right? And maybe you didn't see it, but see how I added Eric and it got put in and then let's move over a little bit and then see how I add Noah Slavsky and it gets added in. I love that about his endpoint. And so, um, yeah, that's just really, really great to use. So now if I want to use his find email uh, parameter, I'm just going to come in here and I need to add an API key, which then gets added. Where is the API? Uh, this is the API. Obviously, this is not my API key, but then this would be the API. Um, and so, oh, we're going to actually put that there so that it's there when I can copy and paste it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit copy and paste on this section here. I'm going to get this endpoint URL. So now we're going to open up uh, the HTTP API and we're going to go over this. So most, I, I'm actually, again, I'm non-technical, so I don't know, but I would say most API tools basically look like this, where you have the method, you have the endpoint, you have the body and you have the headers. And then I'm not even sure what this really is. Then you have a rate limit, which just real quick, a rate limit is like, if they say you can only do 10 calls per 10 seconds, then you know, you'd, you'd rate limit it. So you're not just overloading it. Um, so let's jump into this. So the method, the API docs always tell you the method. If they don't tell you the method, it's most likely this get method right here. And so if we go to detagma, see how it says get up here, but then it, he'll also put it over here in the request as well. And so this is going to be a get method. And then the endpoint, we're going to drop our endpoint right inside of here. And so, um, we're actually going to save this and we're just going to split this up a little bit. Um, so we're splitting this up. Splitting this up because he needs first name and last name. Um, and so we just need, like I said, we just need this. Oh, whoops. I need it in first name and last name. Cool. So now we have first name, last name. And so we'll come in here and now this isn't going to work because we have to like, it, I, this would work for, for just me, but it's not mapped inside of my data. So what we have to do is we have to map the data inside. And so all I do is just replace the data with the data inside of my table. So if we were to have a hundred rows with a hundred different names and a hundred different domains, it would all work. So then we'll put this, we're going to put main here and we are good now we're going to just have to put an api key here i'm going to pause the video to do that um and we'll just do that in a little bit now other times this is why i love to tag this api as well other times you might have body text and so we're going to go over find email um and we're going to have body elements but in the tagmas there's no body elements so it's super easy to use but we do have this header here and so we're going to have to put in the header and so the header uh, is going to be accept application JSON. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste the application JSON. I'm going to put it in here. So see how it says headers. So we're going to add new key and value pair. So remember it was accept and then application JSON. So we're just going to put that in the exact same way that they have it. So see again, it's accept colon application JSON. We don't need the colon, but this is the key value pair or the key and value pair. So it's accept application JSON. So now if we were to run this, I did not give my API key. So if we were to try to run this right now, it would go and it's going to probably say error. Yeah. So then we have error API ID is not valid. So I'm going to pause and get my API key. So I entered my API key in here and then you can see we found email addresses and this is all the outputs that we get from Detagma. So we've set up our first API. Now Detagma, 
when I was using APIs at first, Detagma was probably the easiest API that I ever used. So we're going to go on to something that's a little bit more complicated, um, which it's not, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that complicated, but if you don't know what you're looking at, it's like, you're just going to be completely lost. So we're going to open up HTTP again, and we have all this set up. Now we're going to go to find emails documentation. So let's click on this. So we are going to find somebody's email address from their name. And so this is, he gives us the example request over here. And so we have a couple of different things here. So first we have the request is a post. Remember how in the past we used get, now we're gonna switch this to post. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. Now we need our endpoint. So we go here and we say, ah, okay, this is my endpoint. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. You don't need the quotes, don't take the quotes. So then we copy and paste the endpoint so it knows where it's going. Now here we have a body that we need to worry about. So in clay, we do the headers second, we can do the body, it doesn't matter what order we do this in. So I'm actually going to do, hmm, let's do, let's do the body. So it says body and here it says data. It's all the same thing. So again, we're going to copy and paste everything, but we don't need the quotes. So then we're going to pull this in to the body. And now we have all this data here. So I'm just going to replace everything that is not correct. So I need the name here, no space. I need the domain, no space. And then the webhook URL, we actually don't need that. So we're going to be careful about deleting this. Great. So now this is going to be the body text. I may have screwed this up and we can troubleshoot it together if I did. Now we have to add new key value pairs. So again, see how we have these headers? That goes in header. Data, I don't know why they call it data here and body in other places. Like I said, I'm not technical. I don't know this stuff. So we're going to take authorization and we're going to pull that in here. And then we're going to take content type and we're going to pull that in here. And we're going to take application JSON. Pull that in here. Up here is where we're going to put our um, API key. I'm going to hide my screen for that though. So we're going to do it last. And then we're going to put another header except application JSON. So we'll put um, except here and then application JSON. Great. And so now I'm going to get my API key. I'm going to pause a little bit. So now I'm going to show this because it says failed to parse. Oh, so it says here and it says failed to parse body input. And exactly when I said, I think we messed up, I, I probably know why. So uh, we're going to fix that right now. So I'm just going to hide some things so you don't see my API key. So it said failed to parse the input body, which means I did something incorrect here. So when we look at this, I'm just going to see if we got everything correct. So it was like name. I didn't know we need a web hook. Yeah, see how it says the string is optional here? Uh, yeah, it's so odd. Maybe we're going to try adding this comma here, but the, the comma really shouldn't matter. So let's just try to set it up again. Maybe it'll just fail the webhook URL there. Failed to parse body input. Oh, whoops, I had a space there. Maybe that'll do it. That is so funny. Hmm, and I'm not gonna turn off the video as, as it might not be that engaging because I want to troubleshoot this together. Um, I wonder if we don't even need these.
Maybe we do need the quotes. Who knows? I might be full of it. I'm a poser, guys. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so I got it working, and this is why ChatGPT is your best friend. Um, so it was very funny. So I, uh, this is literally what I asked. I was saying, hey, I'm looking at API docs, and this is what I was told to use for the API, blah, blah, blah. This is what I'm passing. Why am I getting this error? And then it was basically like, hey, do this. Like, get rid of the backslashes and everything. And now it's working, and we can see the contact, and this is great. So... Uh, don't be afraid to use ChatGPT. When people are talking about it knows how to code, it really knows how to code. And so uh, hopefully, it, it, despite my troubles that I just found, this video will help people who are looking to use webhooks uh, and to use APIs. Because when I first started in sales automation, uh, this was a big unlock for me to be able to actually use these things. And I hope this video is helpful.